head of Center for Diagnosis and Treatment for Eating Disorders at this psychiatric clinic of the First Medical Faculty of Charles University and General Hospital. I am the member of AED since 1998, and now I'm collaborating in PCAC and European chapter of AED. Our center has a long history created in 1982 at the first, as the first Central Europe uh, unit specialized for eating disorders, as since is based on hospitalization, daycare, and outpatient research, and, uh, and we are uh, involved in research of biological and psychosocial uh, factors of eating disorders, and also involved in uh, teaching medical, uh, medical students and nutritionists. In the Czech Republic, we have 10 million inhabitants, and we have several ED units, mainly associated with the state university psychiatric centers. And uh, we have several uh, non-profit psychosocial intervention centers in the Czech Republic, and very few specialized facility for children and uh, with eating disorders. In April, uh, this year, we organized online our biannual uh, international interdisciplinary con conference on eating disorders and obesity. This conference uh, was uh, no uh, number 13 and was organized as usual in collaboration with Psychiatric Society of the Czech Medical Association and non-profit e-clinic. The main issue of this conference were transgenerational transmission of eating disorders and family treatment and prevention of eating disorders, as we would like to improve these approaches availability in the Czech Republic. For these top topics, we invited speakers from abroad and we present short example in this video, short example for illustration of their presentation. First, uh, first presentation was uh, by uh, Ivan Eisler, who is a professor in London Monsley Hospital, and uh, he is a specialist, as uh, very well known, in family therapy. This time, he presented an overview of integration of new neuroscience finding into family therapy. Ivan uh, has a long history of collaboration with our center and he also his professional ca career uh, started in the in psychiatric clinic in Motol in the Czech, in Prague in the Czech Republic so uh, we can talk together in Czech so that was the first first introduction uh, uh, um, that was the first uh, presentation uh, the second one was uh, presented by Markus Messner and uh, co-author Stephanie Bauer. Uh, Markus also comes from the Center for Psychotherapy Research, Heidelberg University Hospital, which has a collaboration in the past with our center on a topic of intervention, prevention uh, in eating disorders. And uh, the name of the presentation was what we have learned so far. So that was a, a continuation of uh, research we were involved in in uh, the past called Proyu Studies. And uh, that was uh, summarizing uh, 15 years experience of eating disorders uh, prevention programs. The third presentation uh, was by uh, Karin Fordesson. Uh, she is a clinical psychologist at Red Boom University, name again in Netherlands, and Arctic University, Tremsø. And Karin will was uh, Karin presented a child talks methodology aimed to support children from family uh, affected by their parents' mental illness and uh, we include uh, into this intervention eating disorders. The methodology was developed in 2008 in Netherlands. It has already been tested in, and implemented in Portugal and Norway. So we are looking forward to implement this program in the Czech Republic. 
And the last uh, uh, presentation from abroad was uh, by uh, Melanie Katzman. Uh, I met uh, years ago in AED uh, conference as well. And Melanie uh, now uh, works as a business psychologist, consultant and coach at the world's leading public and private companies, as well as government, governmental and non-profit institution. She presented uh, uh, Con Connect First, 52 simple ways to ignite success, meaning and joy at work. And this became a bestseller and Wall Street Journal. So she shared with us uh, this, uh, this knowledge uh, as she is expert in, uh, in a workshop searching for meaning and success. And we consider this, um, this topic as very, Im very important for um, achievement of recovery of our patient. So that was very important contribution of, of Melanie. Most, if not all of you, will be familiar with the fact that eating disorder-focused family therapy is sometimes described as Maudsley family therapy or uh, family-based treatment in America. It is uh, recommended by numerous clinical uh, guidelines as the treatment of choice for child and adolescent uh, eating disorders. So um, welcome everybody um, to the talk um, titled Internet-Based Prevention of Eating Disorders, what we've learned so far. Um, I will present the experiences that we made with internet-based eating disorder prevention over the last 15 years. So I will talk a little bit about our history I will present the intervention itself, and then I will mainly focus on the challenge. You've heard about the importance of practicing gratitude, but how about expressing gratitude? A sincere thank you is motivational medicine, especially in the workplace. Here are four ways to effectively start showing your appreciation. One, start your day by making someone else's. Get in the habit of thanking someone each day as you finish your breakfast or log on to the computer. Two, your thank you doesn't have to be related to a work task. Uh, hello, everyone, in this late uh, evening uh, lecture. I hope uh, you are still have some energy to listen to me. I want to tell you about my experiences with working with uh, children of uh, mentally ill parents. I work already uh, on this topic for 30 years, I think. And I am working in practice with those families and I am also doing research on this. And as you see, I'm also working internationally uh, at the University of Tromsø. Uh... At the conference, we summarize also research activities and they, their implementation into clinical practice. We contributed to COVID impact research by uh, Dr. Fernando Fernandez Aranda and colleague from Barcelona in Spain, who followed uh, 30 patients with anorexia, bulimia, and psychogenic overeating and other eating disorders, and showed that nearly 40% reported forcing uh, of symptoms, and more than half reported additional symptom of anxiety. We also translated spe specialized questionnaire to monitor the problems during COVID uh, period. And also uh, we recommended uh, for COVID situation, um, we translated recommendation for COVID situation uh, on our uh, e-clinic uh, website. And we disseminate also other tr document translated from AED. Besides uh, this res international research, we have a lot of uh, interdisciplinary research on microbiome and cooperation in treatment on basically on increasing number of eating disorders with comorbidity, including diabetes, food allergies, but also ADHD and autism spectrum. Also at the conference, we presented and initiated New, uh, new activities in the psycho 
therapeutical training available for nutrition specialists. And we uh, started supervision activities across main specialist centers and nonprofit organizations in, in the Czech Republic. So uh, I'm looking forward for these new activities, which I consider to be very helpful. Uh, we also presented in this video one participant of psychotherapeutic training for nutritional specialists to speak about recovery from ex-sufferer perspective. Hi, my name is Simona Haikova. I'm studying master's degree in psychology at the moment. I'm a dance movement therapist and I'm attending a psychotherapeutic training under the supervision of the professor Hanna Papežová in Prague. I was suffering from eating disorders for eight years, specifically mental anorexia, binge eating disorder and orthorexia. I'd like to support those who are going through similar hardships and searching for a way out as I myself wish I had been able to see a video like this when I was younger and was struggling every day. Personally, I see my eating disorders as a result of the lack of self-love, self-confidence, not feeling comfortable in my body, craving for perfection, fear from failure and rejection from other people, which all led to a need of fitting into smaller clothes. In my case, the real therapy of those issues was based on the work with my emotions, their acceptance, being able to express them freely with the help of any type of art, dancing, singing and writing. But I know now that this had nothing to do with food. It was my defensive mechanism which helped me at a certain stage of life to deal with my huge inner conflict as well as the efforts to remain in free child's world and to accommodate the pressure of adult society at the same time. I was seeking somebody to help me, but no one seemed to be out there for me. So I set up really harsh rules for myself, which later resulted in an intervention from my parents and my friends. Later on, when my anorexia turned into a binge eating disorder, came another phase of my life I would call a roller coaster. At this point, I can say that even though my eating disorders have put me through joint pains, suicidal thoughts, overwhelming emotions, the loss of my menstruation cycle, and hours and hours spent at the doctor's office, they also gave my life an order which I wanted to create in order to replace my dysfunctional way of living. They were precious teachers in the areas of self-love and self-care. My illness was my guide. After all these years that I spent jumping from one extreme to another, I realized that it is really essential to take the path which would lead me towards my soul and to truly start feeling my emotions which were previously suppressed by the illness. I was afraid of looking in the mirror while simultaneously I used to spend hours a day in front of it, crying and bullying myself. I was never enough to myself. My condition was crying out loud so intensively that others started to notice. My parents wanted me to see a doctor, but I was so scared that he would take my illness away from me and with it also the protective bubble I was living in. My illness became my inner critic. After a five-year struggle with my mental disorders, I luckily found a professional help. With the aid of medicaments and treatment given from a skilled psychiatrist who specialized in this field, I finally began to see the world outside of my bubble. This was just the beginning of my journey to recovery. I had to learn to treat myself with kindness, to focus less on high performance and to be able to listen to my body, to concentrate on what's on the inside rather than on the outside, to identify the triggers of my binge eating disorder, to find out why I was always comparing myself with others and how I relate to them. For a long time, I wasn't able to cope with my illness because I tried so hard to retain at least a small piece of it to keep me safe. 
I didn't want to have obsessive thoughts, but I wanted my body to be skinny. I wanted my freedom back, but I was still working out three hours per day. I didn't want to be obsessed with food, but I still forced myself not to eat a wide range of it because it was unhealthy in my opinion. The main breakthrough in my therapy came in the moment when I fully allowed myself to feel my emotions. I cried, stomped, laughed, paid attention to everything what was going on inside of me. I let my rage out during loud cries, pounding at a pillow. I set up my boundaries and was insistent about others respecting them. On the other hand, I let myself interact with other people more deeply, with more trust, be authentic and believe in myself, in what I really am at my core. Over time, This sickness stopped being interesting to me. I decided to fully cooperate with a psychiatrist and a psychologist and to embrace this part of my life as a part of an important journey to understand myself and others better. My biggest passions, dancing, school and social contact were the impulse to stop playing a victim to my mental illness. Thank you so much for listening. At our conference, we always organize workshops for teachers, school psychologists, social workers, and even for general population. In this video, we will share our experience with implementation or internationally evaluated prevention program oriented to health promotion in young children decreasing the risk of maladaptive behavior. Hello, my name is Marketa Čermákova and I'm here to uh, show you two programs for mental health of young children, which eClinic promotes in the Czech Republic. Uh, the name of those programs are Zippy's Friends and Apple's Friends, and they are both Uh, licensed by a British charity partnership for children and both of them are spread all over the world on more than 30 countries. Well, uh, first of those programs are Zippy's Friends, uh, which are here to promote coping skills, social skills and emotional well-being of very young children from five years old till approximately seven years old. And the other program called Apple's Friends is for young children aged from seven till nine years. Uh, both of those programs are based on the psychological theory of coping. And this theory Uh, says that if we are capable to cope with stress, uh, then we can live better. We will have better emotional and mental health. Those programs, both of them, uh, are they? They have. 44, uh, sorry, they have 24 lessons spread in six modules. We start from emotions and feelings and we teach children how to recognize and name their feelings. The second module, module in both of those programs is about communication how to communicate about our life, about situations, uh, sometimes uh, heavy or complicated situations, how to communicate about feelings. The third part is about friendship and relationships, how to build relationships, how to build friendship, what is the good friendship. The fourth part is how to, how to prevent bullying. 
And then the fifth part, fifth module is about coping with change and loss. And the last part, last module of every program is about uh, how to move on. And uh, all of those teams are based on, on stories uh, of children in the similar age as children who are uh, we uh, working with. And those children go to school, makes friend, make friends, uh, argue, or solving different problems in their lives. And this is Zippy. Zippy is not a superhero, it's just a stick insect. And Apple is not a superhero as well, it's a hamster. So children can see that you don't have to be a superhero to cope with your daily stress. How do we do these uh, programs? How do we teach children how to cope with stress? We don't tell them uh, what to do. We just give them two uh, simply rules. I'm going to find them. Oh, here. We call them golden rules. And those are rules how to recognize what solution is a good solution in any stressful situation. And the good solution is this one, which makes me feel better and does not hurt me or anyone else. So this is the principle how we teach children uh, how to cope with many, many different stressful situations or feelings, which can give them very good skills for life, not only in their childhood, but also in the adulthood. E-clinic is not working with children in schools. We train teachers school psychologists and other experts who work with children uh, and we train them how to use those programs in schools, in uh, school classes or other school groups of children because we believe that in the in group uh, all those coping skills and social learning is much more efficient. Uh, what children exactly do during lessons with Zippy's friends or Apple's friends? They are listening to stories, uh, working with pictures. They are drawing, singing, talking, uh, role-playing, etc. So it's fun and this is also one very important principle of those programs. We also use things like those workbooks called My Zippy or My Apple and children get those practical cards with golden rules and with steps how to calm down and find a good solution. Both of those programs Zippy's friends and Apple's friends as well are very uh, good recognized and they have been evaluated many times even in the Czech Republic but also in Norway, Finland, Lithuania, Latvia or uh, England. You can find it on the, our websites. <laughs> The last part is a workshop for general population. This year organized with our Olympic winner, Gabriela Sokalova, who came out with history of eating disorder and wrote the book about her recovery achievement. Her contribution is also very important because of 
our central initiative in research of eating disorders in sports and detection and implementation of preventive and early intervention measures. Eating disorders are often classified disease in the sports community. Based on the studies, the prevalence in sports is higher than in general public. Athletes are far more prone to eating disorders than non-athletes, especially females. Eating disorders within sports community are slowly gaining attention also among the public. The public's attitude is closely related to the topic of stigmatization. Patients and their parents are often afraid from labeling anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa and psychiatric illness in general. Shame also plays an important role in concealing the disease, refusing appropriate treatment and thus reducing the chances for recovery. During our conference, we had as a guest Olympic medalist, winner of the World Cup and world champion in biathlon, Mrs. Gabriela Sokalova. She attended the workshop for general public answering questions and giving an interview. During her very successful career, she struggled with bulimia nervosa. Now, she is very active in supporting the eating disorder preventions, interventions, talking to people, answering emails, and she's giving an example how to overcome the disease and how to recover. The recovery is one of the themes of the World Eating Disorders Action Day. Having a look at the workshop with Gabriela, she talked a lot about recovery. She took control of her own recovery with support and advices from experts she trusted. We can see in the sports community the teams around athletes focusing on the current problems, but not what's behind the eating disorder and give a certain meaning to the life. And this was also her story. She spoke about self-esteem, how to accept herself as she is. She thought a lot about the performance in sports. She was grew up forgetting who is she as a person. She learned to do mistakes, which simplifies her life, not to compare with the others, which is for the world champion not an easy way. She started to build up her new life on small little strengths, not to hide a problem, be authentic to herself during the psychotherapy, and also to the others. She went step by step, never giving up, despite the fact there were very hard moments in her treatment and her life. One of the biggest motivation for her recovery was to have a family and children in the future and realize that winning the races is not the meaning of life for her and that having her own family might be a problematic in the future. She as well explained how diary helped her a lot to deal with emotions, hard moments and how she wrote down every day positive events occurring in her everyday life. Last. But not least, she mentioned importance of hobbies to find out the joy in doing what she likes. She's singing, playing piano and painting. Especially painting helped her a lot. And at the end of the workshop, she spoke also about the courage to try new things, try to find a new job, new hobbies, as it gave her a new opportunities in her life and step out of the box. Currently, she's more than five years recovered out of the problem she struggled since her early adolescent age. And dreams come true. She's pregnant, expecting a baby, and her new job is a TV presenter. Her life changed, and we could hear the true recovery story from our guest. As mentioned, the prevalence of eating disorders in sports community is very high. We have had a chance to introduce the new study in this area at the conference. The survey we would like to conduct in following years in sports has a special focus on endurance athletes and the project aims to map and identify eating disorders within this community in Czech Republic. Also to develop recommendations for prevention and early intervention, including coaches discussion panel. We can see the first recommendations already now in order to protect the health of the athletes and we are very grateful for that. 
and we think this journey is worth to follow.